Hey guys, Dom here from After the Fact. I realized while editing the video that I must have had the mic brushing up against my sweatshirt. Couldn't really do too much to edit it out because I'm not the best editor, and I didn't want to redo the video because honestly it came out really well. I'm very happy with how the content was uh, laid out. So I hope that it's not too big of an issue for you guys. Uh, there's just a little scratches here and there, but I do hope that you can kind of push through it. The content is extremely valuable. I hope that you um, think so as well. So thanks and enjoy the video. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Dominic and I'm the host of the Android Factory. The last few episodes we've talked about converting our simple application here that has two screens to the Jetpack Navigation single activity architecture uh, pattern pushed by Google. So at the moment we have a activity here that just has a page list of characters and then we click on a character and we see the details for that particular character. If we go ahead and just uncomment these intent filters here and comment this one out. We have made a little bit of progress here by creating a nav graph activity that does have our nav host fragment here inside of its layout and then we do have two uh, fragments here as you can see this is the detail page and if we go back this is the character list page which is implemented as a simple fragment and then we again navigate forward. So if you've missed any of these uh, little episodes recently I'll put a card in the top right so you can go ahead and get caught up but we're just gonna basically go ahead and continue our implementation here. So in the last episode I actually said that we needed to have a reference to the activities nav controller however inside of a fragment you can simply call the find nav controller here this is just a little bit of an extension function that comes with the dependencies that we've added and it's just a way to essentially get the same reference to the activity nav controller that's defined here. So we no longer need to uh, keep that as a global variable um, and we can just go ahead and just you know keep that in line and, and do what we will with it. But now we're here to kind of update our list fragment and basically form the implementation that we have in the activity at the fragment level. So I'm just going to get rid of this on resume so that we stop bouncing ourselves to a new fragment. Uh, and then inside of our on view created here, we can basically set up the, the fragment as if it were the activity. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and just copy this and see how much we can get strictly from just copy and pasting from an activity to a fragment. Uh, so we take those variables there. We're going to need this function here uh, to basically act as our callback. And then there's also this going on here. Uh, we'll put it inside of our on view created and then we don't have a find view by ID in there so we need to call view dot find view by ID uh, because we have a view passed in here as part of our lifecycle callbacks and then the owner is no longer going to be this for the observer of a live data we in fragments use the view lifecycle owner and this is to ensure the lifecycle connectivity between the live data and the actual state of our fragment. So essentially this observer won't get fired if we are in a state that should not be receiving data uh, updates and whatnot. So uh, again, just kind of abiding by MVVM patterns here and best practices to make sure that we are receiving data updates when we can. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and comment this out because we don't need an intent. This is actually, well, honestly, it's where we need <laughs> to do our little uh, navigation here. So I'm just going to leave it at uh, exactly that, right? Action character list to character detail fragment. Now, if you remember our implementation here, oh, it's gone away. But when we had the character list, you select it and move to another page. We passed in the character ID because that new page needs to make a network call. So we're going to have to pass that information from one fragment to the next. And we can do so with this library, but we'll get into that in a little bit here. So I'm going to go ahead and just delete that. And we now have our callback here for on character selected. We're just going to navigate. And of course, the detail fragment isn't built out yet, but we'll fix that over time here. Um, I think the last little bit here is I'm just going to copy this entire layout and we're just going to paste it right here. Um, and at this point, the layout should mimic exactly what the activities layout is. So all of this uh, view, find view by ID kind of stuff should work just fine here. So 
let's go ahead, yep, manifest is set up correctly. So let's go ahead and just rerun this here and see what we got. Installing the app a little bit, waiting for it to come into the foreground. And we see our loading state and now we see our data on screen again. Um, so there is basically one screen converted, uh, if you will, quite simply. And then if we click on Alien Morty here, we go to our detail page uh, that is not implemented at this moment. And then if we go backwards, we still see this page list set up here. So we don't have uh, a tremendous amount of animation at the moment. It kind of just snaps to the next page, but we can also clean that up. I'm just trying to get the app back to a spot where it was before uh, as far as functionality goes. So this was the list fragment. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for the detail fragment and uh, I'll meet you back when I'm done with that. Okay, and quite simply here, we've gone ahead and updated our layout. Again, just copy and pasted from the activity details here. So that was quite simple. Uh, and then we just cleaned up a few things, right? So copied some of these variables over, uh, and then also just copied over basically the functionality that happens inside of the on create, which we do in the on view created here in the fragment. Again, we use the view lifecycle owner instead of this for our live data observers. Uh, there is a context that is required for a toast, so we can make use of the require activity function or require context function, which essentially get the fragments activity and ensure that it is not null to return the activity that, it is, that the fragment is attached to. Uh, otherwise, it throws an exception, so it's kind of a you know assert non-null kind of thing for uh, a context in a fragment. But then we have one little error here. And this is exactly what I was talking about. We pass in the character ID that was selected. And at this line in the code, we go ahead and fetch that from the intent. We get the int extra in this case. And uh, we use that ID to refresh the view model so that it makes the appropriate network request. And if we flip back to the character list fragment here, we have our character ID of type int, but we're not actually doing anything with it here. As you can see, we're just calling this action, which pops us over to that other fragment. But there's something that we can do here to alleviate this, and this is going to be with the safe args plugin that is a part of this library and is the recommended way to go ahead and pass information like this from one fragment to the next here. So inside of the fragment tag here of our destination, the detail fragment, much like how we have another element here of type action, we can go ahead and define here an argument. And then we're going to have a few attributes that we can uh, modify and set here. So Android name, let's just call this the character ID. Uh, I'm going to do this so that it stops freaking out. And all right. Uh, then there are a few other ones here. So arg type, it is an integer. I believe you have to type out integer, not just int. So we'll leave it at that and find out if I'm wrong. Uh, we can set a default value here. So let's go ahead and set it as negative one. Um, and then you can also optionally add the nullable. And in this case, it would be true and false. And then if we were to set it to true uh, and you wanted a default value of null, you can't actually put null here. You would actually have to put at and then null, and then that will work with the rest of the build system and the library to actually pass in null as that value, not just the string null. So anyway, we're gonna leave it as negative one. We're going to remove the nullability there because we don't want it to be null, but we can now make use of this inside of the destination fragment and also inside of our uh, fragment that we're 
leaving from, we can go ahead and inject this ID as part of the action. But first we need to grab one other thing here. Here we are, pass data between destinations. And so we did this, right? This looks pretty familiar, the argument um, arg type integer, so I was correct in that. I am just looking for the imports that we need here. Uh, yes, so we need this inside of our uh, project level Gradle file, not the module level. So we are going to look for the build.gradle with the period, not the app after it. And then we can very easily just pop this information in here. And instead of syncing now, there's one other thing that we need to do here, and that is add the plugin. And because we are in Kotlin, we are going to be using the one that has the Android X navigation safeargs.kotlin here. And then we can bounce over to the app level build.gradle, and then we can simply put it in here. Uh, just going to reformat this a little bit. And there we have it. Now we can hit sync now and let that Gradle do its thing. All right, and once that has synced up here, we can go ahead and take a look at how we are going to pass this ID to our next fragment here. So we should, inside of whatever fragment we are uh, navigating from, there is going to be something called the character list fragment, and we need to build the project here. Uh, so let me actually just comment this out so that the project builds a little bit. But um, the one, I wouldn't really call it a downside, but the one thing to note here is essentially the entire library works because this nav graph, the way we've defined things here, eventually gets generated into code that the build system puts together for us that then we interact with under the hood. And so because we've added this argument in here to this fragment, we actually have to rebuild the project so that that code generation happens again and so that we do have what I was about to explain available to us inside of our uh, fragment here. So there's going to be a class that's generated called character list fragment directions and inside of there we'll be able to basically make use of this particular action that is defined here to navigate towards this fragment that accepts this argument. So as soon as this build is complete, we will make use of that. All right, and our build has completed here, and we can see the character list fragment directions class that has been generated for us. And then we can see here there is a function that we can invoke that follows exactly the same pattern of the ID of our action. So we see here action character list fragment to character detail fragment, and if we control or command P inside these parentheses, we see a character ID of type int that defaults to negative one. So at this point here, we can say our character ID equals the character ID that is set here. And the navigate function can very simply, uh, let's just make this a small variable. So we'll call this directions. And then inside of our navigate function here, instead of calling it with a particular ID, we can very easily just call it with a set of directions that comes from this library, and it'll know how to navigate to the next destination. Really quickly, I just want to click into this file here, and we can see here that there is some information here with a value of character ID of type int negative one. Again, like to override, you know, it has a little override here for the action ID. This is the action that we've defined in our nav graph. And then we can see under the hood, there is a function get arguments that it overrides, it creates a bundle, it puts a particular intent with the information that we have given it, and the key as character ID, which is the name of the argument here that we've defined right here. So you can kind of see how all this works together. It's not really all that much wavy hand magic. There is literal code that you can read that makes sense behind the scenes under the hood. Uh, and so that's just really convenient to understand exactly what's going on. Okay, so we are in our character list fragment here. On character selected, we define our directions, passing in the correct character ID. We find our nav controller and we tell it to navigate with these given directions. This is great, this is wonderful, but now we need a way to actually get it here in the destination fragment like we used to get it from the um, intent at this point. 
So one more thing that comes with the library here is uh, a way to pull it out. So I call it safe args, uh, at least the class level variable I call safe args. And what it is going to be is going to be of type uh, character detail fragment args. Again, this is another generated file that comes with this whole library with the whole build system. And we can say by safe args here. And we'll just, sorry, I think it's by nav args. Yep, not, not safe args, it's by nav args. And this is just a way for us to go ahead and actually fetch the arguments that was passed in. Again, that whole dependency that we added was something called safe args. That's why I just like to call this variable safe args. That's why this little extension here is by nav args. But the main kicker is that this generated file is going to be the name of your file with args written right after it. And it does exactly what, uh, it basically does the reverse of the directions file where it reads the bundle. It ensures in this case that it is gonna be non-null um, or no, it'll, it'll default to negative one in our case because that's how we've defined things. Uh, so it basically just works synonymously with the directions file to allow us to pass this information back and forth. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete this line. It's no longer useful for us. And the ID here, it seems to be grabbing onto a different ID, but we are going to call safeargs.characterID to get a reference to the character ID that was passed in, again, via this whole system. So that should about do it. If we go ahead and run this here, we should see our application functioning how it was previously as far as this entire page list. And then if we click on a particular character, we go ahead and fetch their details. All right, and we are rebuilding here. The application's coming to the foreground. We are now fetching our information. And if we click on Jerry Smith here, we see another loading state again because of the way everything's set up. And we selected the appropriate character, we fetch their information, we have all of their data at this point. So everything seems to be working exactly the same as it was before, and that's quite wonderful. It really was not too difficult of a transition. If we were to go back, we can kind of exactly navigate to you know where we were on this page. So let's see, Chris, nice looking man here. We're going to go ahead and just go back again. We're right in there with the list. Everything is working fine. Now, there are a few little, I guess, touch-ups that we can do here. Namely, like we don't have the back arrow defined here, and we don't have the ability to click that arrow and then go backwards for uh, navigation purposes. We actually have to do the gesture, or if there was a physical you know, back button down here, it would also work. But have no fear. We can clean all that up. Everything works very nicely with the nav graph. We can define what are called top-level fragments that would not have the little back arrow icon, but then any of the children fragments that we navigate to, we can obviously have the back arrow and go backwards. So we'll clean that up in a little bit, but I want to stop this episode here. I think we've accomplished plenty here um, as far as just transitioning these activities over to fragments. And very easily, we can just go through one by one and just destroy all of these fragments, all of their, or sorry, all the activities, all of the uh, layout files associated with them and clean up the manifest just so we can kind of condense our project down to how it should be. Um, but yeah, that's about it. So I'm gonna cut it here. If you've made it this far in the video, I'd really appreciate a like if you're enjoying the content. Uh, please do subscribe if you notice that you are not, just so you don't miss out on the last little bit here of wrapping up this implementation, and then obviously any of the other content that will be coming out. Uh, this guy looks quite funny. but. Anyway, I will catch you in the next one and have a good day. Thanks.